Let's start by grabbing a little Guggen tackle box right here. This is the Bass Mafia one. Yeah, I love worms. Big time worm guy, especially big worms in the summer. If somebody gave this to you and was like, hey, go pond fishing. Who else? Got him. Got him. Oh, this. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. We are in the Dick's Sporting Goods parking lot because I am in the mood to create something, okay? Mm -hmm. So once every couple months, I like to try to make a video that is kind of geared towards what I like to call the young angler. Not necessarily young age-wise, but maybe somebody that's looking for more tips and tricks and stuff like that. I don't really do that a lot on my channel because I'm not a very good fisherman, right, Andrew? Huh? Yes, right? sir. Now, I mean, are you good? You could, you could be getting some tips. I'm okay. Yeah, we're just a couple of okay anglers, you know. So I don't like to go too heavy on it, but every now and again, like I said, I do like to do stuff like this. So as you guys know, I'm a, uh, I'm a big Guggen guy. I like Guggen stuff. I like the Guggen brand. And best part is, is they make just about almost everything that you would want to go, like let's say, pond fishing. So let's hop on in the store. I'm going to grab. Hopefully, they have a Guggen Squad tackle box. And the goal of today's video is, I'm going to fill it with as many good like pond fishing lures, terminal tackles, soft plastics, hard baits, jigs, wire baits, whatever they have that I think is going to catch fish the best in ponds, let's just say in the summertime because it's freaking 95 degrees. So let's hop on in there, see what we can find, see if we can create just the ultimate pond fishing tackle box for you guys, but using only Guggen products. You ready, Andrew? Let's get it, dude. Let's get in the store. I just had a conversation with the manager of the store and it's just crazy timing because we're coming in here looking for Guggen products only. But he was telling me that they just cannot keep Guggen products on the store. He actually asked me, he's like, hey, when are you guys gonna get us some new products? <laughs> but check it out, if you didn't think he was telling the truth, like look, look at this. This is just one end cap right here, just like halfway gone. Another end cap, this is where all like the hard baits and the jigs normally are, wiped completely out. This is the actual section where the Guggen bait soft plastics normally are, look at this. I mean, just absolutely gone. So unfortunately, the pickings are gonna be a little slim for what we're doing. Luckily, they have some tackle boxes right here though too. But this is just kind of turned into a salvage mission. Like, let's just get as many Guggen products as we can because there's just none left. So holy moly. Let's start by grabbing a little Guggen tackle box right here. This is the Bass Mafia one. This is like the one that we ran over with a truck <laughs> to see how tough it was and it did not break. So these things are pretty, pretty cool. I think we shot it with arrows. We shot it with a giant shotgun and then it finally exploded. But this is a really freaking tough, heavy duty tackle box. We're gonna use this to fill up with. I think we're going to start with hard baits, okay? We're just gonna kind of go our way through. I'm just gonna select which one. I'm gonna tell you kind of why I like to throw it, how I like to throw it. Really quickly, don't wanna be super boring with it, but let's start over here with our big selection of hard baits here. So the first ones I'm seeing is the banger. Okay, Banger is a square bill crankbait right here. This particular one is like a chartreuse and they dive like two to five feet. Great for kind of shallow to medium depth water, especially if you have like rock, wood, any kind of structure that this thing can bounce off of. Chartreuse, black back, really good color for dirty water, which I fish a lot. That would definitely be bait number one. Moving right along, <laughs> I'm a big top water guy, especially in the summertime. Um, you have to kind of get them early in the morning or late in the, the evening, or if you get like a really overcast day, you can get away with it during the middle of the day. But the blooper is basically just your simple top water popper. This is black, my favorite color for top water, besides white, black or white, love that. Just their take, our take on a popper. Great, great lure. I like to fish it on mono, it's just, it's great. We're just gonna like move right down this empty rack because everything we need is right here. Now this next bait is not really my comfort zone bait, but that's gonna be the old Scout, AKA a jerk bait. I just picked this color because this is actually a really cool looking color. I think this is called Elegy Bone. <laughs> How do you say that word? Elegy? Oh. Elegy? I don't Elegy. know. I should know, but I do not. A lot of times bass can get super stubborn in the summertime. And what I mean by stubborn, they're really hot. They don't have that much oxygen in the water. They don't want to move around that much. A lot of times they will suspend in the middle of the water column. So you got the shallow water, got the deep water. They'll just suspend right there. Anywhere from five to 10 feet, depending on how deep your pond or lake is. And I'm kind of speaking of ponds. So like maybe five, six feet. And they just kind of sit there. And it's really hard to get a lure down there to them. If you're fishing top water or a bottom bait, you're not hitting them. So this right here, 
here. It stays suspended in the water column in the middle. It's a really great summertime or wintertime way to catch stubborn bass. And to go ahead and clean this section out, because why the heck not, let's go ahead and get the Grass Hero Swim Jig. That's actually my favorite color for the swim jig, which is the bluegill. Basically just green pumpkin and like Alabama crawl, like a real natural color. I think this is, this is a quarter ounce, so a little bit small for me, but it's the only one they got. So we're gonna have to uh, make that one work. But a swim jig or a football head jig or a casting jig, whatever. I mean, you can do a lot of the same things with different kinds of jigs, but a swim jig, if you have any grass at all in your pond, a swim jig with a trailer, like a paddle tail swim bait trailer or a crawl trailer can absolutely smoke bass. They just get just stuck in that real thick grass. A swim jig can come right through it and catch those bass that are hiding from you. Now, switching from like the hard plastic <laughs> what? I don't know. Switching from the hard baits and jig section straight to the soft plastic section, which is not looking too good these days, as you guys saw. It's a little picked through, but I mean, by the grace of God, there's literally like one pack of different lures that I love in summertime. Let's just start off with like the kind of what I call like the trailer type lures. Lures I really don't rig by themselves very often, but I use them a lot still. And that's going to be the bandito bug and the crack and crawl. They literally have one pack of each. So you can't even make this stuff up. Like the only thing they have really well stocked is the rattle and Ned, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So the bandito bug is that guy right there. Really cool looking bait. I love using this thing as a trailer for a jig, for a spinner bait. Um, I do rig this one on its own on occasion and just kind of like swim it because it has a really good flapping swim with the little flappers. Same with the crack and crawl. It's really good for a trailer for a swim jig. I mean, you could use these for like spinner bait trailers, chatter bait trailer, trailers, whatever. Ever, I mean, but you gotta have them though. You gotta have these in your tackle box. I don't even know what colors these are, black and blue and blue baby because that's the only ones they have. So we're not gonna be able to get too picky on the color. I think those will work though. Moving right along to the worm persuasion. There's literally one pack of Mondo worms and like one pack of Slim Shake. Oh, there was two. Okay, excuse me. They were hiding behind the other. Yeah, I love worms. Big time worm guy, especially big worms in the summertime. I think these are both, this is green pumpkin. This is watermelon red. These are literally the best worm colors that you can get. So the real decision you have to make is whether you should throw a big worm or a small worm. That completely depends on you, how you're fishing. If you're fishing like a, a little shaky head or something like that, the small worm would be, be better. If you're fishing like a big Texas rig on some ledges or deeper water, throw the big worm or a Carolina rig or something like that. But can't go wrong with either one of those worms. Love worms in the summertime. The last little worm that can really get things done if nothing else will is gonna be the old rattle and ned right here. And that's just a basically like a real small little finesse style worm that you obviously would throw on a ned head or a ned jig they call it like a mushroom jig or something like that and it's a real small presentation it kind of looks funky but i have seen people rip lips with these and i have personally caught fish when i just couldn't catch them on anything else you know if they're being really stubborn a bigger presentation is scaring them or just driving them away get you a little pack of rattle and neds it looks funky you have to throw it on spinning gear pretty much some lighter line but don't be surprised when you actually get bit on that I don't, it, this is crazy that they only have like one pack of things, but they've got one pack of the Saucy Swimmers, which is the Paddle Tail Swim Bait, which like I already stated, great trailer for the swim jig, spinner bait, chatter bait, whatever. Literally one pack. I mean, it's like somebody came in here. It's like all the people that are shopping for Guggen stuff left one pack of everything for your boy Lojo. So it's just working out really well today. Now they still are out of a lot of things that I'd like to use in today's video, but I think we have enough to get the basic information across to you guys of what I think a good summertime pond fishing tackle box would look like. All right, I think we pretty much cleaned them out. I mean, I'd love to get some more stuff, but they don't have any more stuff. So I, I really wish they would have had some hammer hooks, some actual like Guggen hammer hooks. Luckily, I've got about 20 packs at my house in the fishing man cave. So we're gonna head on out of here, pay for this stuff, get the hammer hooks. We will see you guys out on the water where I'm gonna bust all this open, put it in the tackle box, go fishing with some of this stuff, couple more tips, and we're gonna hopefully catch some, what do you call them, Andrew? That's Sally's. That's Sally's, man. I don't even like that phrase, but I'm just gonna keep using it because you like it so Thanks. much. Thanks. Thanks okay? for helping my brain. Yeah, sounds good. See you guys out there. All right, first things first, let's get all of our stuff into said tackle box. Kind of got an idea of how I want this to go. Probably not gonna go well at all. I'm gonna take the Mondo worms, actually all the worms, and put them in a top slot. And I made this slot all silly because I'm a silly muffin. Put the Mondos right there. Hear me out. This is going to be the best tackle box anybody's ever made. You think you can do better, Andrew? No. I could, but I just don't want to. Is that what kids always say when they're like, this is like a, like a burn, you know? I don't even know what I'm saying right now. We're out here at the pond, though. Show them the pond, Andrew. Nice little good looking pond. Looks like there might be a, like, I don't know, what would you say, a seven pounder in there? Yeah. 
yeah, they don't really understand that reference because they haven't seen this video, that video yet. Yeah. I actually shot a video out here a couple, a while ago. You guys will see it eventually. I just haven't edited it for some reason. But uh, yeah, I caught a freaking monster out here. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully we can re replicate that, replicate that today. Crankbait, check it out. It's starting to come together here. There's really no organization, but there's kind of like a slot for everything. And that's really all we need. Boop. So while you're looking at all this stuff, Andrew, you tell me, since I want to get some of your advice too, I want to get some of your tips in here. You see this pond, you see what it's looking like. There's a lot of deep wood, there's some shallow grass. That's kind of how this thing is laid out. So what would be your move? I've got two rigs, I got a braid rig and a fluoro rig. So what, the braid rig, the only thing you can really do is either put a jig or that top water on there really. Yep. But what about, would you, what would you throw in this pond first throw ever? I'd probably Texas rig that crack and crawl. A little tungsten action. This one right here? Yes sir. Well I will move one of those to the side. Slow walk that guy across the bottom. I've actually got a Texas rig already rigged up on one of my combos. It'd be a great trailer for a jig too. Heck yeah. The jig would probably be good with this deep wood and the brush guard. But we can start with just the crack and crawl and kind of adjust accordingly. The times I have been out here, I have caught them on a jig. So that's something to keep in mind for sure. This is coming together, isn't it? This ain't it looks bad. pretty cool. Dude, I mean, if, if somebody gave this to you and was like, hey, go pond fishing, you'd be like, okay. You know, like, okay, I got, got some stuff here. I'm gonna put the terminal tackle on the bottom, although, man, you forgot to get hammer hooks from my house. But <laughs> we'll just put some that I already have loose in my tackle, my terminal tackle box, and we'll just act like we got them from my house. Cool, cool. Color of these little Ned rigs is kind of interesting. Let's see, hammer hooks. I'm sure I've got some. That looks like a hammer hook. Put some of those in there. Some Ned rig heads, that's what these things are. That's what a Ned rig head looks like, little mushroom head jig right there. Put some of those in there too. Ouch, that's short. Little shaky head action, little swing head jig. Little tungsten weight action. Boom. Now, look at that thing. That looks pretty saucy, does it not? It looks awesome, dude. It's freaking amazing. All right, Andrew wants to start with a little crack and crawl. By golly, we're gonna start with the crack and crawl. I literally just saw a little fishy swimming around. Looked like a little bass. I've lost him though. Maybe I can get him to follow it on up if I just blindly flip it out there and swim it on in. But if I make one cast to that brush, that big old brush pile, I could probably catch one. What is happening here? What am I on? Is it just that grassy? I've never bank fished this pond. Starting to see why. Look how green that grass is though. That is good grass. Holy shnikes. You know what we need to do is swim this thing through the grass on a swim jig. That's what we need to do. Make one more cast out here. We may have to make some adjustments. For you folks that are still watching, I'm going to be giving this entire loaded Guggen Squad tackle box away to one of you amazing subscribers because I always like to hide these giveaways halfway through the video. That way I'm giving them to somebody who's really watching the videos all the way through. So sit back, relax, enjoy the rest of the video, and I will give the instructions on how to win this completely loaded tackle box at some point in the video. It may not be at the end. So just sit back, relax, watch the video all the way through, get the information how you can win this. I mean, how much did we spend? Over $100, right? Yeah, for sure. So. Good little value, it's gonna cost you nothing to enter. Sit back, relax, that's the third time I said that, just keep watching. There should be a fish right there. Really should be a fish right there. Look how deep it is right there, holy smokes. We fell for a hot minute. Oh, hey, somebody's fishing line. Nice. Nice. Just missing the white yeah, thing by like 100 done. yards. I think we're gonna get out here and rain's finally gonna come. Yeah, with my windows down. Dude, yes. Let's make one actual flip to the white thing and let it. It, let it fall down. I doubt it. <laughs> Get it nice and lodged in everything right here. That way there's just no chance it gets out. Yeah. All right, well, Andrew is insisting that I put a trick worm on here. That's what he calls everything is a trick worm. So I'm going to call it a slim shake worm because that's what it is. Well, isn't a slim shake a type of trick worm? I would call it more of a uh, trick worm. slim shake style worm. That's what I would call it. Where? I don't see him. Ooh, that was, got him, got him. Little guy. So now the real question is, was that, is that an Andrew win because he said switch to the trick worm or was it a spot move win? So I think the spot, I really think that this, I knew this was gonna be better cause it's a lot less grassy. Let's just do a 50-50 on that yeah, okay. one, okay? We can share it. 50-50 credit. But either way, as you guys can see, I mean the, the trick worm, slim shake worm, whatever you wanna call it. He got a little broken jaw right there. Let's get him back in the water. Trick worm is the jukes. Ponds, summertime, 
you really just can't beat it. I mean, it's just such a good presentation. It's so like unintimidating to fish. So even if the fish are like, we were just talking about how pressured this pond is. I mean, a bunch of kids that are, are subscribers to the show, big shout out to you guys. I've met you, some of you before, but when kids come out here or come to any body of water and just pound it all the time, you know, that pressure builds up. It's really tough to catch fish. So small worm, trick worm, whatever you want to call it, finesse worm can be a great way to catch them in the summertime. Yep. Oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. Oh, he came back for it. Little rascal. Then I yanked it out of his mouth that time. Okay. I don't think that's quite the size we're looking for here, but at least we're demonstrating the power of the trick worm. Slim me. shade, now dude. Now you got me saying trick worm. It's a freaking, I mean, you can call it whatever you want. It does not even matter. Literally doesn't matter at all. It's a worm. Let's just call it that. It's a worm. All right, well, we got some things happening here. One, the weather's changing on us. And, that a boy. It's starting to become a little windy. So what we need to do is change things up. And we think the jerk, four to six feet, that should be perfect because I think it's just about that depth. It, it may, you know, it may get a little grassy, but I don't know. We seem to think there's a lot of fish hanging out out here. With this wind now, it's kind of a clearer body of water, which jerk baits, they're a little bit better. They work a little bit better in clearer, clear areas rather than murky. What would be great right now would have been a zinger, a spinner bait, but they didn't have any. All of our great Guggen squad folks have bought them all up. So let's see if we can jerk one out of here. We do need to, we just need to wade out there. We need to like wade out to where the grass break is. That way we can, we can get our lure out there where it needs to be. See, it's, come on, this thing should have got busted by now. Yeah, we're working the right depths now. Brush pile right here. Let's pick this thing up a little bit. Really get erratic with it. Oh, this. <laughs> oh, we sped up the retrieve. He couldn't help himself. Hey, 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 hey. Stop it there, guy. Okay. Well, we caught one on the jerk bait. Just when I was starting to doubt if it was gonna work or not. Look at that bloody tail, dude. Are you kidding me? No way. Is it possible these fish are still in the spawn here? I mean, they're all, they've all been skinny. They yeah. could be males. Do males yeah, get so. bloody tails? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not gonna throw the jerk bait anymore just because it's so grassy in this pond. I think it would work, but I really want to catch them some other way. So we've done the Texas rig, trick worm, crawl. Should we try to swim jig it, maybe? That would probably be, like with all the grass, probably good. Yeah, because the popper, eh, late in the day, this wind is really picked up. That's not gonna be the move. Yeah, let's put the swim jig on there. Yeah, 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 let's do that. Sometimes I have to talk myself into something, but now I'm, I'm all about it now. Do it. Crack and crawl on my swim jig makes these bass hungry. Yeah. So much grass in here. This just seems like a good option. Now that they're hitting moving baits too, that's interesting. So we just kind of pop this thing along, try to keep it right on top of that grass, but kind of in it too, if that makes sense. Eat the jig. Oh. <laughs> he said, okay. See, all you have to do is really like serenade your fish. Just serenade them and they'll appease you. Did you hear me singing it? Yeah, man, it was cool. Look at that mouthful of swim jig. That's actually a pretty good looking fish right there. Like e instantly after I started singing to them, he was like, is that Lojo singing to me? The least I could do is get up in his fishing video. It's number one for the grass hero swim jig. Yay. I think I'm gonna keep throwing this. I know we've kind of been switching because I did want to see like how many different lures we could make work just so I could kind of demonstrate the effectiveness. We were just kind of doing an inventory of what's left in the tackle box. There's just not really a lot of stuff that I have a ton of confidence in, in this particular moment. I mean, you got to remember, we got a storm front moving in here. So kind of some uh, unique conditions shallow water grassy so you got to kind of play the hand that you're dealt as far as what the pond looks like and what the conditions are so the conditions being the way they are in this pond the swim jig is probably going to close it down for us wouldn't you agree yes sir with a crack and crawl trailer could put the pandito bug on there as a trailer but that'd be about the only other alteration that i could even see making that looks dirty though man yeah it looks this the blue baby crack and crawl was made to be on the back of this swim jig like mm. the bluegill color natural color it was just made for it perfect combination or dropping. Whoa, holy shnikes. Andrew almost just lost his life. What the heck, what am I stuck on? This grass is the strongest grass in South America, North America. Dude, I just got nailed right there. 
forgot what continent we were on. Yeah, the, con the continent kind of got away from me. <laughs> But that's just because of how excited I was to get that bite. It's okay, I actually wanted to talk to you guys about how I've been working this swim jig, so I'll just do that right now. So, I mean, you obviously, you, you can't swim a lure wrong, per se, but, you know, this is like, this is probably, this spot right in front of us is probably like five, six feet deep at its, at its deepest part, and it obviously comes up to nothing. So I like to just kind of reel it a little bit and then pop it up off, you know, the, I'm assuming the bottom. Throw some pops in there, throw maybe some more erratic type twitching in there. That's just because it's windy, it's cloudy. It's just, I feel like the more the more movement, the better. So that's just, that's kind of how I do the swim jig, but there's probably a million different ways to do it. And I'm not saying that this is the only way, but folks are always curious as to how I like to do it. And that's how I like to do it. The bluegills are all over this thing, swim jig. Every time I bring it in, I see bluegills following it. They're looking for a new leader to save them from the big bad bass. Ooh, no, I think it was grass, but I mean, it's so shallow right there, you figure. It's kind of a hard place to cast into. It's so shallow. We just saw a fish blow up over here. You may not be interested in what we're selling. Oh, I just have one. Watch out, Andrew. Watch out, boy. I had nothing. Dang it. Come on, guy. These fish are nibblers. I don't like it. Oh, he got both my claws. What a little jerk ski. Both of my claws. Let's switch it up to a little Kraken Craw trailer. I think the Kraken Craw has become the most favorite Guggenbait of all time. I could be wrong about that, but I mean, just like sales wise, I think these have sold the best. So that's kind of cool. I'm a big fan of all of them, to be honest with you, except for the drag and drop worms, because I never really use those type of styles, like a drop shot or something like that. I just don't do that ever. So rest of them, I'm all for, I'm on board. I was not that close. How close was it? Could fine. you have ate it? Oh, your chest would have been fine, man. As long as it wasn't close to your face. You've been casting my right hand. I haven't done this in about 18 years. Whoa! Dude, I just killed a fish. There was an eight pound bass on bed right there. I just murked him. Let's try that again. Why'd you stop Dang it. it. Does it look weird? It looks unnatural for sure well it is it's weird because i'm i'm ambidextrous right so i can do both but not really well because i stuck because i i like to reel with my right hand so i just figured if i can just catch with my left hand it'll be easy so i started bass fishing doing that and i just never tried the other way because it was just like why do that you know what i mean doesn't make any sense to do that all right folks if you're still watching i'm gonna go ahead and give the giveaway instructions right now i'm not sure how far this is before the outro but just to thank you for watching this far just to thank you for being viewers of the lojo fishing or lojo outdoor channel whatever we are we're a channel that has the word lojo in it so yeah, so all you have to do to enter two very easy steps, okay? Step number one, make sure you're subscribed with the bell notification enabled, and I will tell you why that is important in just a second. Step two, make sure you have liked this video. So there's a thumbs up button right below the video. Click that, it should be blue if you have liked this video, and then you're good. I'm just gonna pick a random subscriber at completely at random. The winner will be announced in my next upload in the description box, and, and I'll put a comment, like I'll pin a comment or something like that that says uh, the ultimate Guggen tag box winner or whatever that's why the bell notification is important because you won't miss my next upload and therefore you won't miss your chance to be announced as the winner if you are the winner hit me up i have all social media and i have an email account lojo.fishing at gmail.com please do not try to fake give me a fake identity to win the giveaway that happens way too often andrew what do you have to say about that can you believe people do that <laughs> okay let's take a little break in the action here just take a little break in the action. Oh, I fish slapped myself in the crotch. Bottom of the lip, that's always so weird when that happens. Yeah, so, boom, there you go. I don't even have, I don't even have claws on my jig anymore. I was just kind of hopping it around while I was talking. So if you are the winner and you see your username, please only try to claim the prize if you are that person because I am going to get you to verify your identity. So it's not going to work if you're trying to fake it. If you are the person that actually won, you can hit me up on all social media. Just type in Lojo. I will pop up on any social media. You can also send me an email at lojo.fishing at gmail.com and I will get the box right out to you. Now, on with the video. We might have a few minutes left of fishing before the storms kick in. See if we can catch a couple more fish.
All right, folks, really appreciate you guys watching. That's gonna have to be it, guys. It's about to start raining. We don't have any rain gear. Andrew doesn't believe in it, so uh, <laughs> we don't have any. I think, though, we did a great job with what we had. You know, we wanted to make a, Go a Guggen Pond fishing box, Guggen products only, and we did that. Although Dix was sold out about half of the products that we make, it's okay. We made a good little box. We demonstrated some of the lures and how effective they can be in ponds in the summertime. So had a great time filming. A big shout out to our friends at Dix who uh, are always really nice to us when we come in. They don't try to make us leave at gunpoint like some of the stores do. So thank you guys for being so awesome. Thank you for carrying our products. Thank you guys for being awesome subscribers and for buying all of our stuff. That's pretty cool. So I guess it's kind of a good thing that there were almost all out of that stuff in the stores. Anyways, folks, we are getting out of here on to the next outdoor adventure. If you're looking for the giveaway instructions, I already gave them earlier in the video. So go back, watch the video a little bit closer and you will get the giveaway info. We're getting out of here. Fist bump. See ya.